There are some major problems in Florida today with the homeowner's insurance and flood insurance consistently skyrocketing. Over the past couple of years, we've seen insurance premiums go up. We've seen homeowner policies get canceled altogether. And in general, it's just been a mess for the insurance scene within the state of Florida. What's up, everyone? My name is Thomas with Real Broker here in St. Augustine, Florida. And if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, make sure you reach out to me and my team. All we try to do is give you the information so that you can make an educated decision on what you want to do, which is buy, sell, or invest here in St. Augustine. So in today's video, my main point is to get you to understand what the insurance situation is like here in Florida and how that may affect you if you're living here or if you're looking to relocate and buy here in Florida. So in today's video, what I wanna cover is how we got here and what brought us to the state of insurance issues here in Florida. I wanna cover the insurance market as of right now, and then I also wanna take a look at the future and see what the future holds for the state of Florida and the city of St. Augustine. So how the heck did we get here where insurance is skyrocketing, they're canceling policies? I mean, Florida's money is still green, right? Why are all these insurers pulling out of the state? Well, this actually stems back to 1992 and Hurricane Andrew, where that hit category five, hit the panhandle of the state and caused $25 billion in damages. And I'm sure if you were to calculate inflation from 1992 to today, that 25 billion is actually a lot bigger number than you think. And obviously there was tremendous damage done throughout the state of Florida, mostly in that panhandle of the state, but this also uncovered that a lot of these insurance companies couldn't survive when one of these catastrophes happened. So a lot of them went insolvent and they went bankrupt and they left the state altogether or just closed up shop. This led to many national companies pulling out of the state altogether and not servicing homeowners policies within the state of Florida. And because of the hurricane in 1992, all of the damages caused all these insurance companies pulling out, Citizens Property Insurance was born in 2002. Citizens Property Insurance was born because many of these national and private companies pulled out of the state of Florida and it left homeowners here in the state of Florida without an insurance company. And for many people, that is extremely important, especially if you have a mortgage. If you own your home, you're not really too worried about insurance, at least not as much as if you have a mortgage because you're required to have it if you have a mortgage, which makes it really difficult here. And if there is any catastrophe that happens, well, then you're on the buck for it. So Citizens Property Insurance was created as a last resort for Floridians. So if they couldn't get it from a national company or a private insurer, they always had Citizens Property Insurance. However, over time, citizens' property insurance and the amount of cases that they have has grown. Now, it's backed by the state of Florida, so it technically can't go insolvent, but that does actually put the costs back on the homeowners and the, the policyholders that live in the state of Florida. So that could be a major issue down the road. Citizens Property Insurance has now become the largest insurer in the state. And as of now, they're actually looking to offload some policies. Now having Citizens Property Insurance was just one major key of really fixing or solving our property insurance issue here in the state of Florida. This is one of many things, right? It's not gonna make everything go away. And even after it was created in 2002, we still had massive hurricanes that came through the area and blew through Florida, and we had even more insurers pull out. And just to name a couple of those major storms that came through, just in case you forgot, in 2004, we had Hurricane Charlie. In 2005, we had Hurricane Wilma. Then we also had Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Michael, which has recently came through in 2018. All of these were major hurricanes that changed the insurance landscape in the entire state of Florida because they forced more insurance companies to go bankrupt or just pull out of the state altogether. On top of all those natural disasters, we of course made our own problems where we had insurance fraud and we also had litigation issues within the insurance system here in Florida, which caused to higher premiums and for really for companies to start pulling out because they didn't want to deal with it. A lot of these fraud issues came from roofers coming up to your house and saying like, hey, if we, if we can find any type of hurricane damage, we can get you a brand new roof for the cost of your deductible. So many people, instead of paying you know tens of thousands of dollars for a roof, they opted to go for the cost of a deductible, which could be 500, 1,000, $2,000, and get a brand new roof because they were able to find some type of storm damage, regardless of if it was because of the hurricane or if it wasn't because of the hurricane. So many national companies, many private insurers, instead of fighting you know, with the law and going to the court, they decided, you know what, we'll just pay the bill and maybe we'll just get out of Dodge. And that's exactly what happened, right? We had a whole bunch of insurers pull out, a whole bunch of national insurers pull out, which leads us to today. 
Citizens Property Insurance insures 1.4 million people, which is the largest in the state, and it also was never meant to be that way. They necessarily don't have the employees to cover all 1.4 million people that they have covered on their policies, which is why they want to start offloading some of these policies to private insurers. And this is a major problem because citizens' property insurance was meant to be a last resort. It wasn't meant to be a primary insurer and it's backed by the state of Florida. So let's say a major catastrophe happens and they don't have the reserves to cover it. Well, that's going to go on the backs of every policyholder in the state of Florida. This will be in the form of special fees and extra assessments across every policy, whatever type you can really think of in the state of Florida, which is pretty crazy to think of. Because then at that point, we're pretty much socializing insurance for the state of Florida. So like, hey, if you live on the water, you're kind of getting backed up by the guy who lives two hours inland who has way less, you know, his cost for property insurance is way less. So you're kind of flipping the bill for the guy to live on the water. Is that necessarily right? I don't think so. So if you are a private insurer that's going to stay in the state, what you've been doing is raising your premiums and many Florida homeowners have noticed because everyone's in policy has pretty much gotten more expensive over the last five years, but over the last decade in general. Some homeowners based on where their house is are receiving non-renewal letters. The, the insurance company is like, you know what? This is just too much of a risk for me. I don't wanna do it anymore. You gotta find someone else. And they're typically more expensive anyway. So if they can't find it there, they have to go to citizens property insurance. And the only way they can go to citizens property insurance is if they can prove that any other private insurer is 20% more expensive than what Citizens Property Insurance Group would offer. And now that I mentioned those problems, we also have FEMA, right? So FEMA has now adjusted the rules as well as to what would be qualified as a flood zone or a flood risk. And just to read you through a couple of these points, FEMA's definitely caused some flood insurance increases, right? So they did a risk rating 2.0, which is FEMA's new model that calculates flood insurance premiums based on distance from water bodies, elevation levels, cost to rebuild the property, frequency and severity of flood events. So if you're a homeowner that lives on the coast or next to any type of water, depending on the elevation of your home and just the location of your home, the cost of your insurance premium is going to go up and it probably will continue to go up just like everything else has. And we've even seen areas that were in low risk flooding areas, they've had their premiums increase because of the changes to FEMA's risk 2.0 policy, which has caused their insurance premiums to go up. So you're not even living on the water, you were historically in a low risk area, they are also seeing premiums go up. Now I do have to mention, I'm obviously talking about the entire state of Florida, but South Florida is definitely way more affected than North Florida, especially here in Northeastern Florida, which is why you should move to St. Augustine. But it's the facts, right? We just get hit with a lot less hurricanes. If we do get hit with a hurricane, they're, they're a lot less powerful than typically we're gonna see further south. The building codes here are different than down south in Florida. So it's it's really a give and take. You're, it, it's a case by case situation. And if you are interested in Northeastern Florida, reach out to me and we can put you together with my insurance carrier and we'll go over what that payment might look like for your insurance premium and flood insurance for a property on the water. So this is a major problem for homeowners that live on the water because one, their cost to own has just gone up dramatically and it has been going up. So not even to like pay their mortgage or their taxes, but to just pay for insurance for something that might happen has gotten so expensive that a lot of people are trying to sell their properties, right? And now if you're on the water and you're trying to sell your property, well then a buyer has to come and if, unless they're paying cash, they also have to get insurance on the property because they're gonna get a mortgage, right? And with a mortgage, you have to have insurance. So when you're looking to buy this property, you're gonna do the math and see what makes sense for you on the monthly. And when you take a look at homeowner's insurance, you take a look at your flood insurance premium, you're gonna take a second guess and see if that's right for you because the cost of this can be astronomical on an annual basis and on a monthly basis. Now that I've covered pretty much all the bad stuff and all the major things you need to know about to kind of summarize what's going on here in our insurance market in the past and today, there are a couple of good things that have happened that puts a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully bringing more insurers back into the state. We've also seen just this year, insurers start to lower their premiums for the first time in a long time, which is a good sign. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't get hit with any more catastrophic hurricanes, once in a lifetime events uh, the rest of this year and hopefully in the next five years moving forward. So this thing can kind of figure itself out, but who knows, I'm just pointing this out. I don't know. So that light at the end of the tunnel is some of the legislative changes that we've had over the past couple of years that take a little bit longer than we all want to, to really 
go into effect and, and make some notable changes in the costs. So I'm going to read off a couple of the changes so you guys understand what's going on. If you have any questions about this, leave it in the comments below. But some of the key legislative changes happened in 2022 and 2023. They had roof law changes. Homeowners can only file insurance claims if roof damages exceeds 25% or occurs within a set time frame, helping reduce excessive claims. Like I said before, they had a whole bunch of fraudulent claims regarding new roofs and new roofing companies working the system essentially. And it, it became, you know, a, a problem for a lot of these insurance companies because they didn't want to, they're not, they're not in the, the game of going to court all the time. They want to just do, do the insurance business and that's it and do the bare minimum, right? That's how most insurers are. Uh, but this is helping fight against that because they're, they're making it harder to prove that, hey, you have significant damage on your roof and that's going to need to be replaced by your insurance carrier. Which all in all, I mean, there, there is good and bad to that, right? You could have 20% of your roof damaged from a hurricane. Well, that's on you to flip the bill, right? But if it's 30%, well, okay, the insurer will take care of it. Now, I think that's kind of the personal thing. Like, if, hey, if there's a little bit of my roof that was damaged, like 10% of it, it's probably gonna cost me less than my deductible to have someone go out and fix it than for me to have an insurance company involved. Because I know once you, you have a claim, your insurance rates are probably going up. The next thing, Assignment of benefits reform, AOB reform. Contractors are now limited in their ability to take over insurance payouts, reducing fraudulent claims and excessive legal costs. They've also put lawsuit caps. Florida capped attorney fees and lawsuits against insurers to reduce legal costs, which were a major driver of premium in increases. So that cost that we were talking about, a lot of that not was it from fraud, it was from these lawyers making all this money, just like you know, this whole real estate lawsuit, these lawyers want to make like $33 billion or $33 million, which is like, I don't know, 30% of the, the total settlement. You know, we're over here fighting for 3%. They're getting 30. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. The next thing to talk about, reinsurance support. The state allocated funds to help insurers access reinsurance or insurance for insurance companies, making it easier for them to manage their own risks. So in general, this is just like an insurance company paying another insurance company for a policy to insure their own insurance, which, you know, it seems pretty silly to me. I mean, but this is the world we live in, guys. I'm, I'm just telling you the facts. <laughs> so like I said earlier, this isn't going to change everything right away, right? But it is going to be a slow burn of policy changes that hopefully start to bring insurers back into the state and start lowering that premiums for all the Florida homeowners here. It will also help citizens because they will be able to offload some of their caseload onto other private mortgage insurance or insurance providers. Uh, so that they can really just focus on the, the need of people in the area, not everyone that wants insurance goes to them. So what happens next, right? I covered a whole bunch of information, some good, some bad, but there's one thing that we can account on. Hurricanes are going to keep happening. It's the state of Florida, it's a tropical area. We, we, we're surrounded by water on three sides. We're going to get hit by hurricanes, right? It just matters how catastrophic these hurricanes are. Then also, some of the legislative policies that I've covered. There's probably some really good stuff in there, but I think we're gonna see it take a long time and, and it's gonna to have to be proof, proof in the pudding for a lot of these insurance companies to see like, hey, the cost to do business here is worth it for you to come back into the state. You're not gonna to have to deal with all the stuff you had before. That's gonna take time. People aren't just gonna be like, oh, hey, they made this rule, let's go back. That's just not, they're gonna to wanna to see that the policies that they're enacting are working for this foreseeable future. Then what happens to citizens' property insurance, right? If we have a catastrophic hurricane that takes out all their reserves. Well, I mean, we just learned here, they have insurance for their insurance. So they're insuring themselves just in case something like that does happen. Aside from that, you also have the opportunity where, hey, it can't really go out of business. It's backed by the state of Florida, right? So it's not gonna go anywhere. You'll always have that option, but that option will then be put onto the whole envelope of insurers here in Florida. So everyone will be paying a little bit more across premium statewide. Then there's the other side of it where it's like, all right, well maybe all these private companies start coming in, insurance property insur group, their caseload starts going down pretty good. And uh, that could be a benefit as well. But at least we always know we have the citizens property insurance, which is backed by the state of Florida. So what should you do with all this information? Well, 
the best thing if you're looking to buy is know where your property is, know the risk, know what the cost of insurance is going to be before you close on your home. Because if you get an insurance change, you're living there a year or two after that, that's gonna immediately change your monthly finances and that may or may not work for you. If you need a great insurance carrier, reach out to me directly, I'll get you, I'll get you covered. Don't worry, I got the best guy in the business. If you're looking to sell your home or if you're thinking like, hey, I don't wanna sell my home, but this insurance is killing me, there really aren't too many other options for you. What you need to do is get with your insurance carrier or someone else, like I said, I have someone I can rec recommend recommend you to and figure out a game plan and see what you can do to lower that cost of your insurance premium. If not, you may have to look at selling your property. And if you are looking for that, I of course can help with that as well. But I want you to live in the home that you love. I don't want to force you out of the house. And it's not me, it's the insurance carrier. I'm just saying I'd help. Um, so that's really the best option for you to make sure that you're still in a good financial position, regardless if you have insurance or you don't. So all in all, not all is well in the sunshine state, but it's gonna be okay, right? Everything I just covered, it's not like there's a major, major red flag, right? You just need to know about it. You need to be educated about it. And that's the purpose of this entire video. If you learned a little bit, if you have any questions about what I just covered, leave them in the comments below or reach out to me directly with any questions that you may have. Like I said before, if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, make sure you reach out to my team. We're not salesy, we're not pushy. We're here to help you make an educated decision on what you wanna do. Until next time, guys.